We got a Baskin Robbins. There's only one here, I think. So we've never tried it. Uh, we got some chocolate waffles. I'm cold. So the ice cream and the waffles are probably cold because we've walked a fair day at home. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Ice cream is fairly melted. Waffles. Mmm, might need to go in the oven. But yay, excited. So today we're gonna be, my boyfriend Callum and I are gonna be scripting out a short film idea that we have. We've been bouncing it around for a while and now it just seems like a good weekend to sit and work out the script. We're both gonna voice act in it. Voice acting is not actually something that I've done before. I haven't even voice acted in my own films before. I've never made films with voice acting before. We've got a really cool idea. I think it's gonna be really fun. So we're gonna sit and script it out and chat about the ideas and things today. Um, that's very exciting. We've just been out. We, we thought we were taking advantage of the good weather and we were gonna go out and uh, get a milk tea and um, we ended up, we still got the milk tea, we ended up getting rained all over and then on our way back when we were freezing cold and talking wet, the sun came out and now it's a really lovely day and we're back inside but we got a Baskin Robbins and a milk tea so I think we're pretty happy. I'm wearing my, uh, my Disney top today. Can you see it? Yes. It's from the Enchanted Tiki Rooms. I love this, I love this jumper. I love it so much. It's so comfortable. So big, so warm. Don't know why an American would ever need it, but it's great for Scotland. You get so alone sometimes it starts to make sense. On this side of paradise, we're never concerned when the grass always greener on the other side of the screen. Misery set her sights on the likes of you and me. When I rose alone, you pulled from my chest. When white mask of tragedy says ribbons round the neck, and then shadows to cast over beds that <laughs> we made and start. These are words coming from my mouth. The Hungarians, the Turkish, the Irish, the Polish, the Germans. I don't know what that means. The Polish, yeah. the Germans. Moved my old desk. So this is the one I had before I got this new one. So I moved the old one in front of the window so that I can come and sketch over here. I've got my sketchbook, my pencil case, my cup of tea, and the drawfee channel. And a fudge bar. And yes, I do like flamingos. Hello, welcome to a little drawing section of the vlog today. This landscape that I'm doing now, I really enjoy doing these. It's really easy for me to just lock off an area in my sketchbook, a square, a rectangle of any size that I want, and then just put a landscape into it with like two or three pencils. They help me fill in little blank gaps in my sketchbook where I don't know what else I would put in there. 
say I'm doing a spread where I'm doing people and I've got some weird spaces left, I tend to fill up with things like this. Oh look, that's Link from Good Mythical Morning. I think it kind of looks like him. I don't know, I don't currently like the way that I draw people just when I don't think about it. My natural style, I guess you would say, that I default to when I'm just sketching things, I think kind of looks really flat cartoony. It doesn't look like it's well stylized and I don't like it. I have a really bad habit of not enjoying my sketchbook quite quickly after I've been working in it because I don't like the way that the sketches sit together or the way that I've done certain things. I also find that these sketchbooks don't handle a lot of materials very well, so they quite often look very messy very quickly. These are just sketchbooks that I picked up from my university while I was there and I have probably about 20 semi-used versions of this sketchbook all over our flat. I decided recently that I should probably be making an attempt to fill them up. So this sketchbook is kind of a weird combination of drawings that were done in here in about 2015 and more recent drawings that I picked up and finished just recently. Okay, so here's some of the finished spreads. These are more of these squares that I was just talking about, these landscape squares that I really enjoy doing. They're really easy, they're really fun, and you can use whatever combination of pencils you want to do these. I just use really rough strokes and I don't think too much about the kind of line that I'm putting down on the page, it's more about the composition of the piece. Then these penguins, these were in here since 2015, and I just painted them in recently. Honestly, when they were just line sketches, I thought they looked terrible and I really thought they showed their age, but now that they're painted in, I don't think they look too bad at all. Then on this page, this fox is a little bit Sophie McPike inspired. I really like the way that she uses her pencil lines. I don't think it turned out very like her work, but I do like what I ended up with. So yeah, I really like that fox. I really like all these mushrooms I've done too. Then this rhino here, this was another drawing from 2015. I did it live at Edinburgh Zoo in 2015 in front of an actual rhino and so the anatomy was quite off. So I wanted to tighten up before I painted it in and that eventually just became drawing an entirely new rhino. This is the original sketch of Maya Mabi. Every time I do a creature feature, I tell myself I'm going to experiment more with it. And then I'm really bad for just iterating over the exact same drawing until I get something I like. Then on this next page, it's another 2015 drawing of a tapir. This is actually the first one I painted in and it went so well that that's why I decided to go and do all the other ones. I've been really enjoying using red and blue together recently. This loot sketch in the top corner was where that idea came from. He's the astronaut character from my 2017 grad film. This is probably my favourite page in this entire sketchbook. This is one of the pages that I was drawing on when I was trying to figure out how I naturally draw people. A lot of these ones were kind of inspired by watching Cheyenne and how she draws. But like I mentioned earlier, I've been really struggling with drawing people, so... The fact that I'm looking at this now as I record this and I don't hate every last one of these is a good sign. And who doesn't just love Grumpy Percival? Look at him. You grump. You're so grumpy! This page in the top left hand corner, this painting of a robin, is referenced from a photo I actually took myself at the Royal Botanical Gardens here. I'm surprised my sketchbook tolerated this because the sketchbook really does not like watercolours, but it kind of seems to have its moments. Then beneath there is just more bird experiments and stylizing birds. I'm not crazy about either of these. That flamingo over there, that one is from 2015, but that shark is good, those fish are good, not mad about either of these people. Then we have the page full of the people that I was struggling to draw. Don't hate this sketchbook page, despite the fact that I've mentioned several times in this video that I haven't been able to draw people. This right page is definitely a stronger page than this left page. I like this one of this girl down here in the yellow jumper, and I like these little mushrooms, and I don't think it's a failed sketchbook page. I just don't think I'll continue to draw people like this in the future. Really, really like that Pikachu in the top corner. Definitely the best sketch on this page. After I designed Percival, I remember being in a conversation in one of Zesty's Twitch streams where we were talking about sailor or pirate salamanders or something. And I remember thinking that that concept was absolutely perfect for a partner character to Percival. And this was me beginning to look at that concept and kind of make some decisions about the character design. So here we are developing further the Axloth character from the last page. This character is supposed to kind of be sly and a little bit charismatic and he's the one who's always getting them both into trouble.
One of the things I was really developing here was face, eyes, relationship from eyes to face. I don't know, which one do you like the best? I don't think I'm mad madly keen on any of them. So we went outside for a snowball fight. It lasted about two minutes before Callum had hit me in the eyeballs with snow. <laughs> and now we're back inside. How is it doing this? Look at my snow angel! It's got a big footprint in the middle because I had to get back up. The snow's very, very weird. No! 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 Good afternoon, it's February the 10th. It's a lovely day. First time we've seen the sun in a while. I've got some character design work I'm working on. This is Malu. She's a character from a game that we're sort of side developing. And I'd like to get it on my website, so I've kind of been working on putting it from like what is my sketchy thoughts on stuff into actual, you know, stuff that I can show people, into actual portfolio pieces that I can show people. And then get them on my website. So I'm working on Malu, the other characters, uh, there's about four or five more that are currently done. So I'll get to those at some point too. And I'm hoping to get some storyboards done today because it is the board jury. February storyboards pushed two together. Hold the fire underwater, watch the flames go out Felt like thunder, I won't wonder why I'll never touch ground I didn't think I would end up here I'm changing colors Submitted a piece of Steven Universe fan art to the Red Bubble Partner Program and they just approved it. So here it is a piece of Steven Universe fan art that you can now buy from my Red Bubble store. It's a bag of pumpkin seeds. Originally, when I took a look at the Fabordery Challenge, I had planned on doing a couple of sets of small boards every week. I thought that was going to be the best way that I would 
get better at storyboarding. But when I got to storyboarding out some ideas, I found it really difficult to generate them. So I came up with this cute little idea about Percival flipping a pancake. And I thought that it would be really fun to play about with the actual pancake flip. And it gave me a chance to work with some environments. So I thought this would be a good chance to practice a lot of the skills that I struggled at when it comes to boarding. I actually found this to be really fun and a really good exercise. Once I had done the first rough pass, I worked out a lot of the shots and the angles and then I put them together on a timeline and I decided what didn't work. When I animate in Photoshop, I try my hardest not to use a lot of onion skinning. Whilst it's great to see the layer that you came from, I don't think it helps me as an animator if I just rely on the technology to get better at placing shots. I like to simulate paper flicking by just rolling my cursor over the frame I'm working on and the frame behind and placing the next frame kind of in the right place based on my eye rather than relying on the software. So that's kind of why you see me flicking back and forth while I do this. What I did here with the second pass is just tidying up a lot of the shots that I made in the first pass, making the positions stronger and defining the shapes a bit more, making sure the anatomy all made sense and making sure my perspective all made sense. If you guys are interested in seeing the animation that I made in the end, it will be on my Instagram at some point. So, you know, check it out there. Today I'm going to be looking at my personal branding. I think it's about time I changed it. The last time I did a rebrand was just last summer, but I kind of did it in the middle of the lockdown the first time around here in Scotland and I was feeling crazily quite drained. I didn't really like what I came out with, but I needed something to go on my website pretty immediately because I was doing it up then and there. Um, so what I'd like to do now is develop something that I feel like fits more than the last one does. The last one's a yellow. It's a yellow word mark, which is fine. I love the color. I just don't feel like it's very versatile. And it says Abimation Studios, whereas my I'm actually registered as Abigail Lamb Animation, which isn't really a problem because I don't have a company registered. That's just how my tax is registered. And so that doesn't really matter, but I'd kind of like a logo that gives me the flexibility to eventually register a company under whatever name I kind of would like and still use that and not have to edit it too much. Just kind of change the word mark underneath. I feel like recently I've seen some tendencies through my work that I don't feel like I've really noticed in the past before. I'm seeing the same colors appear. I'm seeing the same kind of line work, the same character development and things. And I'm beginning to see within my own work, probably the first time ever, some cohesivity to my brand. And so I think now is a really good time to try and update my logo because I feel like I'll get something out of it for the first time that I really like. I've been really liking 60s style logos in terms of the colors, the shapes, you know, modernized 60s, not really, really old logos, but modern 60s logos. I'm really enjoying badge logos, the kinds that are encapsulated in shapes, like, I don't know what you call like the archway type shapes or circles or rounded edge squares. Um, so I've got some, some idea of what I think I would like to make, but now I just kind of have to sit and figure it all out. So here's some of the ideas that I came up with. You can see down the side, I have some ideas just sort of bullet pointed out. Stars, moons, flamingos, space, galaxies. And then on the left is all the kind of ideas that I came up with for combinations of things that I liked. The sort of bad shape, the 60s influence, stars, moons. There's a lot of things in here that feel very tarot card-esque. The lines coming off of things, the dots, the shapes. Definitely the more illustrated one of the hand and the star in the corner. 
I know it doesn't exactly tell you that I'm an animator, but I didn't want to overtly display that in my logo or represent that in my logo, because when I think about animation logos, quite often the same things appear. And I just wanted something that was a little bit more open-ended and less specific than that. Since I do also do other work, like character design work or illustration work or brand identity work, I didn't want to tie myself down to anything too particular and specific which is also why I've left the word animation out of my logo. It's too specific. Here's some examples of how I see the brand working for me in a couple of different color palettes. I definitely like slightly off primaries. So I've got a nice yellow, a pink rather than a red, and a kind of greeny blue rather than just a blue. Originally, I kind of thought that much like the pink that I would go lighter on top of all of the colors that I like, but I actually found that a darker logo worked a lot better for balance. I think you can see them a lot clearer this way. As you can see, I've got a tall, bad shaped one, which is the one that I will want to use the most often. And if I possibly can, I'll use that one every single time. But for the occasions where it's too tall and it doesn't work in certain situations, I do have a horizontal and I've just got an icon. So yeah, pretty satisfied with that outcome. I genuinely didn't think that I was going to like it as much as I do. I half anticipated to get completely stuck, just like I did six months ago, because at the end of the day, making your own personal branding is really difficult. And I think we all struggle with it. So I'm pleasantly surprised to see that I didn't get completely stuck again this time. And I'm really pleased with this. And I think I will be able to use it for a number of years going forward and not feel the need to change it. So this is the end of the vlog. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate you sticking around. In terms of other things I did this month, it didn't quite make it into this vlog. I did do January's creature feature. Uh, I will put it here for you to look at. I didn't make it to February's. Uh, we had some stuff come up in the last couple of, like in the last week or so. And it just kind of meant that I didn't get it done, but I am working on it. I have done this piece currently as some research. Um, the first one, the Amabi, was, is really cool. Uh, I suggest you check out Amabis because they're really interesting. Uh, give one a draw yourself. Got some fascinating backstory. Do you think, or would you buy, uh, personalised recipe cards like the ones from my last vlogs, but with whatever illustration you kind of choose to go on it? It would probably be with like the with blank bits for you to write in the information, like the recipe and the ingredients and how many people it serves and blah, blah. But I would do the illustration custom for every card and then send them out. Do you, what do you think? I really like the recipe cards. I had a quick look on Etsy and I wasn't seeing a lot of similar things. There's recipe cards for sure, there's recipe cards, but the most personalization you get from them is maybe putting your name on them. And so I thought this was maybe something that people might quite like. But, I don't know, what do you think? Do you think you'd buy one? Do you think you know someone who'd buy one? Tell me with story experience, maybe give me some advice. If you got this far, thanks for watching the entire vlog and I'll see you next month.